Hello, this is the Archie Luxury Channel. Archie Luxury Channel. And uh, tonight we are with one of my favorite friends here, the favorite, America's favorite pro bono lawyer, Clive. How are you? Great, Archie. How about yourself? Hey, I'm not too bad. I must say that I'm not too bad. Um, I'm actually trying to grow. I, I was looking at another watch channel. I gotta confess, there was another watch channel called Crown and Caliber. I don't know if you've ever seen that channel. And they had a very chic guy there, really chic guy. Uh I don't know what his name is, but he looked really, really he looked like a bit of a George Clooney. Mm -hmm. Uh I noticed he had that sexy, unshaven look. The Don Johnson. Yeah, so I decided to have a bit of a sexy, unshaven look. This is this is day, this is day two of not shaving, so we'll we'll just see how it goes. I think the other thing is too is the fact that he was uh, about fifty pounds lighter might have also helped, and he seemed to have a bit more hair. That could also have something to do with it, but you know, start start with the easiest part. In your start case, not shaving. With yes did you see the video speaking of laughs did you see the horns video i made this week uh a couple of them about the horns sticking out of the ground yeah yeah the, yeah yeah that's that's exactly right did you like that yeah actually is that is that like uh, symbolic significance is that where your ancestors emerged from no, the earth i i have no idea i think it's something to do with cattle but i have no oh, i just okay. thought it, i just saw it i was walking by i thought hey that'll make it great the fisters would love that Clyde, like transformational portal, possibly. You know. Anyway, Clyde, it's great to see you. I, you're looking fantastic in that sexy. I can see also you've taken inspiration with those sexy, those very very sexy polo shirts. Could you just please pull your back a bit? Bit. It's a Lacoste. Have you pulled off the alligator logo? No, it's not a Lacoste. I just like the shirt. Okay. I, it's one of those things when you dress in a suit and tie every day. Um, yeah. at, at times I'm a little bit, I struggle with casual wear since I'm kind of used to wearing. Can I ask you tire. something personal? You just did. No, this is even more personal. Okay. Do you find yourself like being a slightly portly gentleman? Do you find that, you know, you know, when you have a suit, well, e even if you're skinny, it doesn't matter your pants always wear out in the crotch and your jackets last forever. How the fuck do you get around that? What do you do? Well, it's possible. It, it, if it's a good enough suit, you just order more pants. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Good point. Good point. I normally order two or three pairs of pants at a time, but I've had this suit for 10 years and I think the fabric's hard to get an exact match now. Well, yes, because even if they have the exact fabric and style, you're, you know, dry cleaning and exposure to the sunlight and so forth and so on, it wouldn't match anyway. Oh, no, I had no dry cleaning. I've never cleaned it. It's fine. Okay. Maybe well, that's still, why it's got I... that putrid stink to it. So tell me this, Clyde. What should I do? What do you do when, when the, see, I, I even though they've got a hole in the pants, I still wear it because you can get a couple more wears out of it, can't you? Until it really, really rips. Well, it depends on where the hole is, quite frankly. But it's in the crotch between your legs. That's where it rubs, isn't it? Well, true, yeah. Um, you can't really get it. Well, it, well, it, yeah, jeez. Uh, no? it, it's, it, you have to determine on a case by case basis, but, of course, on the other hand, if it's if it's a hot day, you get a little cross ventilation down there. That's not bad either. And once you get a small rip, I, I notice it rips very easily to a bigger rip. Yep. Don't you hate that? <clears throat> Absolutely, but it means it's generally time to get rid of the suit anyway. Oh no 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 no! I don't I don't accept that. No 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 no! That's wasteful wasteful. Okay, now this week we're talking Friday night with Clive. Um, I see behind me. If I'm not wrong, it looks like you've uh you've straightened up the fallen picture behind you no it's just further it's fallen down further down the wall so oh, okay no. no worries no that's cool um now <coughs> i wanted to talk to you i i don't 
I like to do these shows where I'm giving you advice live on air. I don't want to rebottle the magic. I'm a bit like Frank Sinatra, one take Frankie. I don't want to waste time during the week telling you. Okay. Okay. Now, I've got some advice for you on your collection because what's happened this week, if I'm not wrong, is that you were contacting me about should I buy this? You you had a chance to buy a vintage Breitling. Right. And uh, just for the audience there, I am going to bring this picture up. I'll bring this picture up so you can see it. Um, here we go. Let's see. Can, can you uh, can you see that yes. now, Clyde? Yes, I can. Okay. So th this was from Uberoki. Right. And he offered you this piece. It's a Breitling. What was it? Eight oh six. Eight oh six. Yeah, I'm not an expert on my Breitling. Uh, reference numbers. So this is an early what sixties, fifties, fifties. Wow. The only problem is, is that it's actually is a redial. Is that correct? It's been the dial's been refinished. He's having a. He's actually found a uh, new original stock, original dial. Actually, and got it from Australia. Yes. It's having installed. Now the only thing is, Clyde, I got to be completely honest with you. Um, I, I kind of think, okay, the Breitling vintage Breitlings are very, very cool, super cool. Okay, no question of that. Highly collectible. Right. However, I would say to you, if I were you. I would uh hey guys. Hey, how are you there? I'm fine. How are you, Paul? Not too bad. Now Scott, I what I that's Scott. He's just Lee. Lee came in. Lee just came in there. Um so we'll we'll talk to you in a minute. Just 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 just, just hold your fire, Lee. Um now uh I gotta say this, Clyde. If I were you I think you're going all over the tangent. I think you are you were a Rolex collector. You got a beautiful Rolex a to die for Rolex collection. I think you're better off just to stay with Rolex. I wouldn't flick to these I think you're better off to do Rolex well than to do hodgepodge bit of this, bit of that. You know what I mean? Uh we'll see. We'll see. I'm still considering it. Because I got to be honest with you. What do you buy then? Okay, you got to say to yourself, okay, you buy this, then you want to get a Breitling Cosmonaut, right? Then you want to get, you know, you. I I would say to you, you've got to work out your theme of your collection. I think, personally, I think you're better off to say, okay, my theme is this. Right, I, I think your theme should be vintage, should be Rolex, Rolex Sports, Rolex Gold, because you've got a three gold Rolex pieces. Right. I, I would you. try and concentrate on the Rolex side. I, 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 I wouldn't I know you've got a Panerai, but that's just a it's a one off, right? That's just a one off. What what other thing you've got that other German piece of shit? That, but that, that's just just that's just a cheapy. Is there anything of substance? Is there anything of substance you've got besides Rolex? And the Pam and the Pam Zero? No. No, I said the Pam. The Pam. You got one Pam. No, just the, just the Devos, and that's that's it. Yeah, well, that doesn't really count. Okay. So my advice to you. I think sometimes you've got to put some, I mean, you can collect everything in the world, right? But I think you're better off to say, hang on a minute, I'm only doing Rolex or I'm only doing, you know, you've got to decide, you've got to decide what exactly are you collecting? Because I think if you try and do everything, all you're going to do is get a whole lot of cheaper shitters, cheaper watches, like ones with redials, ones that are the cheap ones you're going to always be choosing the cheapest possible option so my advice to you i'm not saying don't buy the navi timer 
but what I am saying, Clyde, is I wouldn't just buy that piece because it's I think you got to decide what is your collection. You could collect icons. So icons would be you want a Navi timer, you want a a Speedmaster, you want to get a 1675 GMT Pepsi, right? You've got to try and work out what is your focus. But if you're just going to willy-nilly get things that Uberoki's throwing out there, you're just going to have a scattered collection with nothing brilliant. Do you understand? Right. I don't know. That's my advice to you. My advice to you would be to stick with Rolex. I mean, it's okay to have one Panerai. That's okay. That's not going to kill it, right? That's okay. That's okay. Right. But I wouldn't be going to these other brands. I would be keeping that money to get a really nice Pepsi. I mean, go on. Well, actually, and here, here's the other thing. I mean, I'm, we've talked about vintage before, and you basically stay away from vintage. But especially my experiences with so far with just going through and, and keep in mind, Uber has a box or boxes of chronographs, but it seems to me vintage watches are a goddamn minefield. Agreed. They definitely are. Vintage watches are a huge minefield in the sense that is the dial original is, and mm -hmm. even this, this, this dial he's got from Australia, I don't want to be rude to you, and I don't want to doubt his professionalism or or expertise, but it's very hard to match up the dial, the correct dial for that watch. That's next to impossible. A real purist would come and say, "Oh, hang on a minute, that that's a that's a fifty nine, and the case is a fifty seven. That that can't be possibly right." Because yeah, or. Or, yeah, because it's like, well, obviously that's got the rice dial and it should be the beaded dial instead. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, and I, I wouldn't fucking yeah. know a thing about these things. So my advice to you, Clyde, would be try and – I'm not saying you need to have rules for your collection, but I would try and say, no, I'm only collecting Rolex. I, I think for you, personally, I, I, I think – you can scatter things to find. You could say, okay, I'm going to collect cl iconic classic sports watches, right? Mm -hmm. Fine, no right. problems. So you would go Breitling Navi Timer. You would go Speedmaster. You could go Breitling Cosmonaut. That, that's a classic. Uh, the Cosmonaut was a 24-hour dial version of the Navi Timer. There's so many classic pieces you could go for, but you've got to set your genre. So if you're going to go sports can right? you tell me can you tell me what else is wrong with that picture what else is wrong with that picture yep the logo the logo the what the logo nope no logo that, that's good that's that's the that's the the that's the early is that the pilots association logo exactly that is the pilots association logo yeah, I, I actually, believe it or not, I've actually got a Pilots Association buckle. They had a special limited edition buckle they used to produce. I have one you're of those. Seeing, you're not seeing the force for the trees. Very poetic. Okay. Uh, what's a chronograph? It looks good. What's, what's the no, problem? Something... It's going to... You tell me, Clyde. You 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 hit it on the head. The hands. Yep. What about the hands? They're every wrong. Every other every other one. Every time I've seen has syringe hands. That has block hands. Yes. And to me, that's yeah. That's the... Yeah. So and it's one of those things. If you look into the details, everything else might look right. How's the printing? How's how's everything else? Is a, is a reproduction? Has it been refinished? But you know. You know, you think you think. I'm not a, uh, I must say, I'm not an expert in Navi timers. I must be honest with you there. I'm not an expert in that to know that. I I, I don't yeah. I don't. That's really not my expertise there. But it's it is. I got to tell you, <clears throat> my advice to you, Clyde. Stick, stick with. You gotta gotta set your. I think you need to have some rules, otherwise you just end up 
collecting a whole lot of shit. I, I, I've been down this road here. I'll tell you what happened with me. I had a Omega Flightmaster, mm -hmm. and I also had an Omega Speedmaster Mark II racing dial. Right. I, it's a long story. I went to visit a friend of mine. He had all these cool vintage watches, and I thought, hey, I'd really love to be in this this genre. This is so cool. These are so cool. And I, I asked him, hey, well, what do you think is a good investment? He ended up selling me the, these two watches, which, to be honest with you, um, I probably shouldn't have bought them because he, he, yeah. he, he, he loves them himself. So he charged a high price for them and um, not being rude to him, but I should never, ever have bought them. They were high price, and I, I wasn't convinced on one of them. I wasn't convinced that the dials were. Um, I wasn't. No, the, the, no, no. Sorry, the case. I think it was recased into a new old stock case. Oh. Actually, I'm just. Um, I'll just bring something up on the screen for you to see here. This, this is actually one of his watches. Take a look at this. This is one of his watches. This is a, can you see that? I'll just see if you can yeah. hang on. Oh, yeah. okay, yes. Okay, so that, that's, a, that's a Cosmonaut, okay? So that's a 24-hour version of the Navi Timer. This, this is original dial one. Just looking at the created, hands. Which was created by when an American astronaut approached Breitling and said, you know, in space, a 24-hour dial would be a lot more beneficial yes. than a 12-hour because we can't tell yes. day from night. Yes. You know, the American yes. space program that you said in your last program doesn't really have, exist. That one. Yes. Yes, that so one. The, right. So th this is, actually, you're right. Looking at the hands there, they are the, this is the type of vintage hands you would expect. Look, you can Correct. see a lovely, lovely patina on them. So. And it's got the I red got a, box pin as well. Yes. Boys, can I just ask, how old is the bright one that you're looking at? Which one? How old is it? The the first, oh, it, Clyde said it's from the 50s, isn't it, Clyde? Right. The hands look quite white. They look they look like new hands. They are repainted hands. They cannot be original. Yeah, they well, do. And that's the thing with vintage watches because, you know, they were used as tools for years. So it could be that. Uh, it, I've seen redials with lovely patina, and it could be because someone bought the watch in 1957, then fell in the pool in 1962, and had the and had the had had the had the dial replaced. It doesn't mean it's necessarily chicanery and fraud by no. the uh, by the no, seller. No, that's 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 just out sort of interest there, Clyde. That is the vintage L, L, the Pilots Association buckle. No, that's the twin. Uh, that's the twin jets. The twin jets were also on a lot of Navitiners. The it was ah, the okay. AOPA. Sorry. You're right. And then they had the, You're right. Then they Sorry. Had the twin jets, and the AOPA was an option at that point. You're right. Very. You know your vintage. Now look, Clyde. I got to no. be honest with you. Um, it's it's up to you what you do. I mean, I I I don't want to tell you how to suck eggs, but um, I've got to be honest with you. Some of these things here are very vintage is tough. Okay, vintage is a very it's a very, minefield. It is a minefield. So I got to be honest with you. You got to decide what you want to do, Clyde. I'll just show you a seventies. Do you want to see a seventies? This yeah. is a beautiful seventies. And, and because these watches were used for so long and so often. I mean, it could have been sent to the uh, uh, Breitling Service Center, who just said, "Well, we're just like Rolex. We're out of we're out of these. Let's put a modern part on. There we get good to go." Yeah, yeah. They it's they good. didn't care about the. This is look at this. This has actually got block hands, Clyde. I I don't know if these are wrong either. Look at this. This is a more. This is a seventies Navy timer. Twin jets. Right. And it's got blocky type hands there. Quite a different, style, different style of watch in twenty years, and it could and it could be, and again it could be something else. It's just like maybe the guy was actually a pilot, 
And, you know, after 20 years, he said, well, the hands, I, fl I still fly at night. The hands don't light up, have the loom that they have, that they don't have the loom that they used to. Do you think you could and probably maybe Bob, the watchsmith down the uh, road said, hey, I've got these. These things will light up like uh, Chernobyl or they didn't have Chernobyl yeah. back then. But well, are, those, are, those, are those redone yet? Are those not original? What? Are those original? Uh, I think these are original. These ones, because this comes from a a very fussy collector who's who's very much an expert on on dials. So uh, these these would all be. Well, I'm that, thinking of. That's original. Yeah. That's original. Yeah. That. Yeah. Paint. Think of all of the watches that have been made, right, and all of the different paints. So possibly uh, a paint was used. That wasn't as that didn't wear as quick as others, so they look newer. So we don't know, but it's it's possible that a different paint was used. But I gotta say to you, I gotta say, what do you think, Lee? He should stick. Okay, my advice to Clyde is to stick to vintage Rolex. Stay away from this. He's jumping all over the place. I I, I think unless he's got unlimited money i think he should stick with i think he should stick with rolex i, I don't know why he's looking at other brands he's going to end up with a whole lot of crap the danger is clyde instead of getting better example rolexes you're going to end up with all these pieces all over the shop you know what i mean hodgepodge right. of things and I'd, I'd rather see you clyde keeping your money to buy a vintage, um, a really nice vintage um, Pepsi, Pepsi sixteen seventy five. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's the better thing. Look, I, I'm not saying the Navi. Navi. I mean, you got to decide what your collections are. I, I would say this to you. My own. Can I? Can I? I want to. I want to dish out some advice because. I don't necessarily need to follow it myself, but I think myself, if you have some rules in your collection, it generally speaking makes it more fun, gives you a bit of direction. Right? Like, like what I like to do is, I'll give you an example. I really otherwise love. It's, otherwise, it's playing tennis without a net. Yeah. So, I, by the way, I'm wearing my Speedmaster today. There we go. I'm wearing my Speedy. What are you wearing, Clyde? Oh, Milgau, super cool. And what are you wearing, Lee? Uh, the Paul Plutter Special Cutting the Lawns watch, the Seiko 5. Seiko 5, super cool. Yeah. So I, I would say, really, Clyde, in my collection, okay, I, 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 have, I have a problem with money. I have a limited amount of money. I think most people in this world do, okay? We don't have a million dollars or a hundred thousand to pump in if you had a hundred thousand you want to fill a niche sure you could buy these things but my way to do things is to say well in my case i kind of prefer more modern examples okay i like things i can use and wear okay i'm not necessarily buying these things as investments i'm buying them for my enjoyment so in my case um i gotta tell you i love my paddock i think that's possibly an investment okay the paddock because that is oh, a yeah. very what do you reckon lee the paddock's an investment definitely the jager la Coltre, well i've actually had it engraved that's more of a family heirloom so it, it's kind of cheap enough to keep i mean it's not a cheap watch but it's not in the paddock league so I had it engraved because I'm an eternal flipper and I, I just wanted to hang on to it. I really love that. What? That's a engraved on it. Sorry. When, did, when was it? When did you get that engraved on it? Well, I got that get? for my 40th. I got my, I, 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 my, my wife at the time put in, we had an engraving on it, which is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It just has oh, a engravings are cool. Okay. Then I got my, my speed master. I love my speedy. Um, now that's a modern speedy. Technically, I should have got a 90 speedy. I actually had, listen to this, guys. I had right. a 1991 Speedmaster. 
which I sold to buy this one. Now, technically speaking, the 1991 uses an 861 movement. It would have been the better investment piece. Okay, but that's had to be a lot of people say that. Honestly, I would take the newer one over the older movement. If the newer because... one was box papers, <clears throat> and I thought, you know, that that really um, is is really cool to have there. So, um, you know, that's 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 my uh, view on that. The Explorer 2, I just always wanted an Explorer 2. So I actually, believe it or not, this was a stupid move. I swapped, I sold my no date sub to buy the Explorer 2. Okay. And there was $1,000 came my way as well. So not only that, actually, I think it was $1,500 came my way. It was, yeah. yep. So that, in oh, hindsight, dude. that was probably a little bit silly to do, but that's okay because I like the Explorer too. I love your, I love your no date now, Clyde. I oh, very sexy. I love the rubber B strap. Is that a rubber B strap? That is good eye. That is a rubber B strap, but it's the it's the back of the case I'm showing. Wow, amazing! Not a scratch. I cannot do rubber. Oh, I, I, I do love rubber straps. Um, you make your arms I, sweat. Thank you. Yep. So, sorry, that was just my, my, I've got my diet. My diet breakfast has just turned up. Sorry, oh, my, my dieter's breakfast has just been delivered. Oh, that's Pizza. better for you. Eggs. Yeah. Well, Eggs are better than bacon. Yeah. You see, Lee? Lee, uh, Archie subscribes to Pizza Pagoda. They feature backyard breakfast deliveries. Mm, exactly. Right. So, Sounds very so guys, amazing. Lee, I'd like you to talk. I'm just going to eat this sandwich. Yeah. Right. Well, tell, tell, tell Clyde what you think of him changing into different brands. Is he wrong to do this? Right. Or do you good. want to read some comments? Well, we could read comments, but I'm going to tell you something. Right, okay. Um, yeah, going for different brands is always fun, right? But right. old brands, um, there's there's a few worries, right? Yeah, if you're getting it from a good dealer, then right, okay, um, it's possibly it's possibly good for parts, right? Everything's probably original. If that something does go wrong, it's an old Brightland, right? It's not the most common movement in the world, and that is going to cost you a lot of money to get fixed. Plus value. It's not the best. It could be better. Rolex is a hell of a lot better holding money. So, for me, if I was spending a lot of money on vintage, the, the, really the only three, well, the only brands that I would touch would be Rolex and Patek for extreme, if I'm buying things that are upwards of like 3,000, that's especially in vintage. Um, so, I, I, it, you just have to be careful with these watches that weren't as popular as the Rolex because... It's just it's a nightmare to get parts if something goes wrong. Absolute this, nightmare. This one's already been cleaned and extensively serviced as well. But yeah, and, and again, it's the vintage minefield because you think you've got, you know, you come along and you think you've bought a three, I mean, a, fourth, a watch that's worth $4,000, I mean, $7,000. And it's like, oops, there's this wrong with it. And the Breitling guys are super, they're like, I, I don't know, uh, Apple, they're like Mac guys in the watch world. Like oh, really? as Archie said, that that bezel doesn't quite match up with that dial, and so instead of getting a, what you thought was a seven dollar seven thousand dollar watch, you've got a thirty five hundred dollar watch, and it's almost it's almost like rolling the dice. Yes, it is definitely. It's definitely rolling the dice, especially with thinks. an avid. Everyone thinks they're special. Everyone thinks they're going to win the lottery. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Man, pig, warthog. I'm not going to ask. No, I'm not going to ask him anything about the lingerie. He, no, that was not for Archie. I'm not jealous because I want my own lingerie. Bob from Brisbane. I've already bought the Brightly in my mind. And uh, um, I want more late. Bombardment guy. I want more lady boys in the show. No, no, actually, I can tell you stories about working at a 7 Eleven in law school by a uh, swishy area of town. 
Oh, um, oh sucker horns on a nice. Yeah, we've got a sucker horn. We've got, we've got a sucker horn, we've got J Sykes, J Sykes. Um, and everyone else in between. Basically all the usuals. Oh, yeah. All the usual fisters. It's kind of actually kind of nice having uh, watching art. Uh, I thought it was really nice watching uh, Archie and Suckahorn because it was just nice to be on the fist party. Actually, I think there's a lot of fun being on the on the comments, just talking, uh, chatting up all the nasty vinyl counters. Does Archie well, stop swearing? You know, hey, yeah. sorry, blame blame Google demonetization. There's a comment that says. Um, Archie, I'm looking back a while, and it says Archie just said um, something good about a Seiko 5. People were shocked by that. Does everyone... No. Well, I don't know if Archie actually had a Seiko 5. Well, I think at one time he said everything at one point, but we kind of had something that we're talking in like April or May, like what would you, uh, what would be a good watch to get a nephew for a high school graduation present? Now, obviously, you're not going to buy your nephew an, uh, a freaking Rolex, but he actually said a Seiko Five would be a great deal, great deal for the money, if I remember right. Like they're honestly excellent little watches. Um, oh, yeah. you get a lot of money. I mean, I've got. A, I'll zoom it in here because I did get a new webcam finally. Let's see if I can get this damn autofocus working. <laughs> there we go. Control focus, right? right? Um, it's got a display back, right? That's right. like that's like what eighty eighty dollars of watch. It's got a display back. Yeah, movement isn't that pretty at all. But the movement is still something that if you're just getting into watches, it's still a wonder to watch. It goes. It's it, it as a watch movement. Now, wasn't Seiko having some problems with their watch movements recently? I heard a couple of uh, comments or videos about that. The, so what was that called? Well, it wasn't like Seiko that. having some problems with their watch movements recently? Some quality control issues? Well, Seiko have always had quality control issues. Um, the, the, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with that channel called G. Anthony. Um, he had a, a Saab. That's one of the Japanese domestic models that are only sold in Japan. And one day he just left it down. This was a while back, but... It stopped and it was fully wound. It stopped, so he was like thinking to himself, "What's going on here?" He jump started the balance wheel, which got it going again, but still don't know what's what's happened with that because if a watch just stops and you still haven't found out what it was, that's a worry to have. You know, it's I'd want to know what was wrong with the watch. Um, other problems have been bad accuracy. I mean, some of them are okay. Um, the Seiko SKX Diver is about minus three a day it's running within cosk right this is yeah as this is plus eight seconds a day so that's pretty good and i've never had a problem really the only problem that i've had with a seiko is i bought one of those divers right i had another right. one set the first one had a problem the crown if you're familiar with screw down crowns, it usually does about three full turns, one or two full turns. You know, it has it takes a while to screw it in. The one I had mm -hmm. before only really done a half turn before it was screwed in all the way. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of strange. I hadn't cross threaded it, I hadn't uh, right. stripped it. So I sent it back to Long Island Watch and I got a replacement for it. And this one's perfect. Long Island Watch over here, Long Island Watch? Yes, In Long Island Watch. It's it's basically where I would recommend buying a, any if you're looking to buy Seikos, it's the best place to go. They're pretty cheap. Uh, those are about two hundred dollars, right which is not bad at they all. Featured, yeah, they also featured that at Long Island Watch. Watch. Uh, you know, it's like the Divas MG One, water resistant to a thousand feet, uh, ETA automatic movement, super duper. Uh, Corrosion resistant alloy. Oh, he's not here, so I can't. Uh, I pulled it out to see if he'd make a face. Never mind. Anyway, oh, wait, wait, actually, a question for me. Someone's asking them. I'm saving up for a watch, but they forgot which one. It's a Tudor Black Bay 36. Now, Paul's been saying, or Archie, whoever wants it, um, has been saying, don't buy new. 
you know, I've been really studying the, the used market for it. And there's ones that, you know, it's it's a new watch. It came out in 2016. So I'll wait, I'll actually tell Paul this because he'll want to hear this. If he can hear it. Can you hear us, Paul? Wait. No. Did he come wait, back yet? I think he'll. Oh, wait. Oh, God. Oh, God. Right, Paul. Fuck. He needs to get one Archie. Can you hear us, guy? Hello, oh, he's hello, hello. Oh. Yes. Right. I was I was I was gonna tell you, update on the Black Bay. Um been looking at the used market. It came out last year at Basel World, so there's not that many. I found one in the UK for sale, right? Yes. And the problem is is it's only about seventy five pounds under retail. Ooh. Right. Listen. Nineteen hundred pounds brand new. I could get that for seventeen hundred in a dealer. Mm. Oh, you're also including sell. They have sell stacks over there too, right? They got VAT. No. VAT yeah. VAT. It's all included in it, though. So it's like usually, um, I mean, it kind of the VAT will be. Um, you won't see it on the price, but it's all included in the UK. Something says nineteen hundred pounds. That's how much it costs. But. Honestly, I could haggle it down cheaper, brand new than used. So there's no point in me buying used. There's 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 none on the market. There's none whatsoever in the UK on the market. Plus, other objection, um, my parents have a problem with me spending two thousand pounds online. Well, near enough two thousand pounds online. So they would rather that I bought it in a shop. It's just you know, it's 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 like that. So, um. But I could get it for, I reckon I could get it for like £1,800 brand new. And it, it retails for like £1,900. Do you have any, do you have any tips actually on um, haggling down prices on Steam Sports watches, Paul? Look, haggling down look, prices. Look. Look. Actually got some background echo actually there. Background echo. Yeah, it's not me. Look, I, no, I am. Um, Okay, I honestly would say to you, um, I'd probably get a speedy. Couldn't you get a speedy for that sort of money? I don't want a speedy. I don't really like them that much, to be honest. And now, I want a smaller watch. I, I love thirty-six millimeters. I think it's lovely. Pretty... Yep. Ah, oh, geez, you know the thirty-six mil one. It's a little bit small, isn't it? Not for me. This is a 36 and now I really like it. Which good on my wrist, 36? Look. Okay, 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 okay. I understand. Look, it is a great watch. I don't think you're going to do too badly. If you buy that new, is it really the end of the world? I mean... No. I'm never going to sell it. It's, it's a watch. That's uh, what everyone uh, says. Yeah, they yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. say that. Listen, listen, I've never sold a watch, right? I buy watches to keep. I study watches. I'll, I'll wait... I'll maybe look at a watch if I'm buying one and wait a few months before I buy it, even if it's a cheaper watch, because I'll think, do I want this? Do I want to use it? Plus, you know, it's it's really like, it's one of the perfect watches. So I, I do not see myself selling it. It's, yeah, it's stereotypical to say that, but I don't see myself selling it. Yeah. I know. Also... It's it's nineteen hundred pounds, right? It's not going to go down that much. It's, it is. Tudors are not bad. Tudors are not bad at all. We resale, and it's in the Black Bay line, so it's always going to be good for resale. So, quick question, and this is also a comment, but it's one I've wondered about as well. So, you ultimately you're talking about the Archie Eight. And I'm not talking about uh, Hungary, Hungary jacks. Yes. By the way, you realize you did a commercial for free, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So I didn't think you did shit for free. <laughs> um, as for uh, as for a diver, what are you, what are you thinking about just right now? I'm not. I realize no serious plans. You don't have any serious plans. No, no, no. I don't. I don't, don't have, have the money. I don't. I don't have the money. But you have to visualize it. You have to think about it. Certainly, Look, certainly. I got to be honest a... with you. I'm thinking the Archie Eight, right? 
right? I'm actually, I'm actually thinking two Rolex, two Omega is acceptable in the collection. So, so basically one watch per brand, but two Rolex and two Omega because they are both super brands as far as the popularity goes. Uh, so I was thinking of having a, I'm going to get a vintage Omega Speedmaster Mark II, which I really, I like that type of watch. You're going to get one of those? You've already got one though. Do you no, I had one before, but I sold it. I sold it. This is a Mark II. Mark II is the very 70s version yeah. of the Speedmaster. Yeah. yeah no um, I got a deal, deal a friend who's going to get a vintage one in a nice condition. But as far as the diver goes, I was thinking about Panerai, and I thought, you know, I tell you honestly, I probably would say Panerai is a bit of a minefield, and even though they're not worth a lot secondhand, they're not really reflected on the secondhand price. Like dealers are holding out for the money. They're not discounting them. So i got to tell you, I'd probably go, I'm thinking, if I've got to buy something, right, I, ideally, I would like a two-line, no-date Sapphire. Why don't you go something different? Why don't you look at a Yachtmaster? It's diver-ish. It's not for uh, No, no, I can't, uh, do, I can't do Yachtmaster. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. no they're different. I mean, it's, it's, okay, a Yachtmaster, it's, it's like the old saying, the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire was neither holy, nor Roman, nor an empire. It's the same with the Yacht Master. It's not really a dress watch. It's not really a sports, sports watch. watch. It's just for rich prats at the country club, the yacht club. Yeah, and they look like if you wear it at all, it's got the soft bezels. They look like crap. No, no, no. I, I, I would say, look, look, Clyde. I would say no date sub. Right. Soft bezels go bad. But, but, I got to be honest with you. If the pricing is very high if the pricing uh bluesy bluesy is always a consideration yes but um i gotta be honest with you i was thinking maybe even a brand new ceramic oh, yeah. oh. You're, gonna, you're gonna you're gonna shout at me for looking at brand new no, 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 gonna... i'm not gonna buy new but i mean i mean i mean that's a new i'd have to buy it second hand but yeah, I mean, it's a newer watch. It's a current model watch, you know. So I might even, but I I think myself, I got to be completely frank with you. Um, it's going to be. I don't have to have a diver. I don't have to have a diver. It's going to be at least, at least eighteen months before I get anything like that because I want to build up some savings. I need to build up some savings, and and I've still got to pay a bit off the Breguet. I still got to pay a lot off the Breguet. Um, so did you, get your, did you get your money back on the links? Actually, I've got to send him a photo. I said, to, cause he's a bit confused. Uh, look, it's okay. They'll, 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 they'll do the right thing. I'll either, uh, for some reason, the links don't fit. The links they sent me don't fit. I think it's the later model Breguet type 20 as opposed to, something's different something because they they definitely they look the same but they they won't fit in there so um yeah yeah hey guys let's wrap this one up yeah let's wrap it up i'm gonna do another one with just clive i've got i've got a, someone who's paid for a video about world government so uh i just wanted to put you on quickly there lee to say hello so uh that's why yeah, I put, no yeah, worries so uh, okay guys we'll I'll, I'll put another one up give me about five minutes and we'll be back again with clive thanks a lot yeah